Let's take a look at some of the lines. The Action Networks. Chad Millman is back on a Friday edition as we get you ready for a great NFL weekend. A lot of interesting lines here. I've been looking at this one all week, Chad. This Jets team, are they like the Dolphins from last year when it was like 20? You still like went against them. I mean, they're a home team given uh, it was open to 10. I see it at 11, 10 and a half. But I mean, am I supposed to feel that the Jets have now got to the point where double digit home, I feel safe betting against them? Uh, no, actually. And, and you know, it's interesting. You mentioned the Dolphins. Last year, the Dolphins, like when the numbers got crazy high on them, uh, there was a lot of buyback. And professional betters, including myself, uh, not that I categorize myself as a professional, um, like starting about week four or five last year, all started betting the huge, huge spreads with the Dolphins. And they were betting on Miami. And they started covering quite a bit. Um, and it ended up being a great value to be on the Dolphins through the end of last year. The Jets this week, like this game, you're right, this game opened at 10. It immediately got that up to 13. And then it got to 13 and a half. And when it got to 13 and a half, the betters, the professional betters started coming in and they started taking the Jets. I don't think the Jets are the Dolphins. Um, and I don't think that betters were betting on the Jets because they think they're a very good team. I actually think. Everyone pretty much is on the side that if I'm going to, if I'm going to bet anything, I'm not betting the jets. Cause I don't believe in Adam Gase, but there are reasons why they were betting on the jets that had more to do with the bills. The bills looking like a team that is struggling a little bit more. Um, Josh Allen is struggling a little bit more. They're not working sort of in the all phases of the game as they have been earlier in the year. So especially on the rushing side of the ball, like, if the Jets can just do the smart thing and try to run the ball as much as they can, there are some vulnerabilities there for the Bills. Um, so that's why the number came down. All right. Uh, another one that I find interesting in terms of the number is how is – all right, this sounds odd to say. How is Washington a favorite in any game? I know it's Dallas, but is that telling you something there? It started at 3. Washington was a three-point dog at home, and now they're favored all of a sudden. So – Vegas is really like normally Vegas knows the Dallas suckers will start pouring money in, but all of a sudden they're, they're a road dog here. Yeah. Well, look, that's got everything to do with sort of how the money has been coming in. And like, especially after that Monday night debacle against, um, against the Cardinals, like the, the bets, there's 63 or so percent of the money coming in on, on, um, the Redskins right now. So it's a, I'm sorry, I'm a Washington football team, but, um, Absolved. yeah, thank, thank you very much. So, uh, part, <clears throat> part of this is about, it's about how badly the Cowboys played and also seeing what Washington can do on the rushing side of the ball and what they can do against the, um, against the Cowboys front seven, Alden Smith might not be playing. They haven't been able to stop anybody. And if there's one thing that Washington is good at, their defensive front four can stop the run and they can pressure the passer. Andy Dalton has proven he's terrible under pressure and Zeke Elliott has proven that he's prone to fumbling the ball. So you're starting to see uh, some people thinking there's an edge on Washington here. How about this Titans Steelers game? It opened up as Titans a dog at home by one and a half points. And now it has flipped to them being favored by one and a half and one in other places. This is the most polarizing game of the week if you're a professional better because everyone has a strong opinion one way or the other. I am on the Steelers. I like the Steelers in this spot. I like them when they were two-point favorites. I like them even more when they're two-point underdogs, largely because I haven't seen the Titans actually play really well. I feel like they've been winning games because uh, Mike Vrabel has made some great coaching calls. They've played some teams in bad spots, and they've gotten a little bit lucky. But to me, like, they haven't been a team that is really impressed and is worthy of a caliber of a team that is 5-0. and uh, The Steelers, meanwhile, I think they have. And I think they have won against challenging competition. And their rush defense has been so good this year that that is the one strength you can count on for the Titans. So I like this spot for the Steelers. 
That's a game you can hear right here on 97.3 ESPN. Now, uh, interested because as we sit here at, uh, you know, 3.30 on a Friday, the Saints are losing guys. Thomas is out. Sanders is out. That opened up at 7.5. It's 7, 7.5. If you can jump on it now uh, before that thing maybe changes, you got Panthers plus 7.5 and, uh, and the Saints losing guys left and right. Yeah, I like the I like the Panthers a lot in this spot. Teddy Bridgewater generally as as an underdog is really good. Teddy Bridgewater as a big underdog is better. And despite what happened with this team last weekend, like I think that they have played so far exceeded expectations and proven that they're a really well coached football team. Number one. Number two, the Saints, like you said, they're missing talent. They're also just not playing up to the level of the team that I think everyone expected them to be. Drew Brees clearly having struggles throwing the ball downfield. And against a defense like the Panthers that is getting better, um, that's going to be something that they can take advantage of. All right. Uh, Chad Millman, the Action Network, is with us. And uh, you can take a look at all the lines and how they're moving and what, of course, uh, all the different apps out there have. And, you know, one of them is I I always like, you know, you get that. You mentioned the Monday night game. You get Arizona, who looked really good. Now, this is a little wonky because the game got moved. And you have Seattle off of a bye here. But I feel like the public saw Arizona and was like, huh, they look pretty good. They're three and a half point favorite. You got an undefeated team as a three point. I guess it's I get it, it's on the road, but undefeated Seattle getting three and a half, uh, excuse me, giving three and a half here on the road. So I'm interested to see where this money kind of goes because you got the Cardinals who look good and they are a home underdog in prime time. Yeah, I like Seattle in this game. And I think that it's exactly what you were saying. To me, it's a, it's a sell high situation. The Cardinals beat up the Cowboys and they looked really good doing it. The week before the Cardinals beat up the Jets and looked really good doing it, but they haven't beaten any good quarterbacks. They haven't played any good quarterbacks in reality. And they've also, except for when they lost to the Lions and Matthew Stafford. And um, so it's interesting to me there's all this momentum for Arizona right now. There's all this momentum for Kyler Murray. And you know he's going to break open a big run and be really good on the running side. But his passing game has not been that accurate. He has not been a guy who's been blowing it up the last three weeks with throwing the ball. So I think there's – and believe me, the Seahawks defense is just gross. And you always have to worry about that. But there's a sentiment that the Seahawks are only winning one-score games – but when they're winning them, they're winning them with touchdowns. And so I'm going to be on the Seahawks. I think this is a, a really high-value play. How about the movement in the Patriots 49ers game? Opened up with the Pats, minus 5.5. It's now minus 2. It's hard to get a read on who the San Francisco 49ers team is right now. And at the same token, you know, same with the Pats. It's a weird matchup between these two, I feel. Yeah, I like New England. And again, it's the same reason. Like, at this point, you're getting them in a buy-low situation. And at two points, it's five, it's three and a half points off the number. You're going to be getting the best of the number. And look, Belichick and that team looked terrible last week with Cam coming back from COVID. But the 49, the, the Broncos defense is really good. It keeps everything in front of them. And they, they played to New England's weaknesses. I think San Francisco is still a little bit banged up. And Raheem Oster got hurt again. Jimmy Garoppolo still didn't look great playing off that uh, high ankle sprain. He had a hard time pushing off. And what happened is you got a a Niners team that looked really good in prime time. So everyone all of a sudden is betting them. And that to me is a great time to get on the other side. All right. Chad Millman is the uh, chief content officer at the action network.com. Get the action network app. It is a tremendous tool uh, to check out and kind of shop the lines all over the place. So Chad, uh, what is your favorite game of the weekend? We didn't talk about it. It is the Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Browns uh, visiting the Bengals. I think the one thing the Browns learned learn from the last time they played the Bengals, when the Bengals uh, and Joe Burrow, they covered that game with a meaningless touchdown at the end. They came through the back door. They realized that the power of their offense is in the rushing game. And whether it's Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt, they've got a great offensive line. They've got a great rushing scheme. It's what Kevin Stefanski does the best. It's what he wants to be doing. And they've got a quarterback in Baker Mayfield who is too erratic. 
either he's under pressure and can't control it, or they need to close out a game at the end and he makes bad decisions. And it's really like, to me, it's becoming a referendum on is Baker Mayfield a franchise quarterback or not. And, and we actually had a story this week on Action Network uh, by Chris Raybon that sort of ranked seven different quarterbacks in the past uh, three drafts and, say, and basically deduced like at a number of 407 dropbacks, uh, you've got a really good sample size. And that's when sort of mathematically the geeks will tell you that the next 407 dropbacks are going to be based as much on skill as luck meaning you know what you've got. And at this point with Baker Mayfield, you don't have a franchise quarterback. So this is going to be a rushing game to me, and they're going to blow through the Bengals' uh, defensive line, which seems to be in tatters right now. Uh, so I like the Browns at three, three and a half. All right. Uh, that's an interesting over-under, too. Fifty and a half is the over-under on that one. That's another uh, thing to keep an eye on in that game because uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati should be fun. Steelers, Titans we talked about. We hit on a bunch of stuff there. Make sure you follow Chad, listen to the podcast, get on the Action Network, and obviously uh, have a little fun on Sunday as the NFL is uh, continuing week number seven. And Chad Millman was kind enough to join us here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Always fun, Chad. Enjoy the football. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah, man. Looking forward to catching up with him again next week right here on the Sports Bash Live 97.3 ESPN.